And then the, the church and the government made him recant. But they, they pardoned him like a couple years ago. So everything's Good afternoon, everybody. Sorry we didn't actually have opening music there. We actually cut in a little bit early. <laughs> Um, anyway, welcome back to The Atheist Experience. I'm Ashley Perrion and my co-host this week, Jeff D. Howdy. Welcome back. Uh, we are live today, September 5th, and we're being sponsored by the Atheist Community of Austin, a nonprofit educational organization promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state. We have weekly meetings every Sunday at uh, Cousin City Beignets on 6, a couple blocks west of Lamar. The address is actually 1211 West 6th Street. Uh, those start around 11.30 and go until about 1, 2 o'clock, um, and it's, it's very informal, very open. Uh, any atheist, atheist-friendly people, more than welcome to come down and meet us. Uh, it's just sitting around, having a good time, chatting and eating, eating donuts and drinking coffee. Uh, again, that's every Sunday, save the third Sunday of the month when we have our lecture series at the Austin History Center on 9th and Guadalupe. Uh, the one upcoming for this month in two weeks from today uh, I don't think we have a lecture, uh, a lecture actually lined up for it. I think it's just going to be some uh, ACA discussions. Um, we'll know a little bit more about that next week. Um, but those are every the third sat third Sunday of every month, starting at twelve thirty in the Austin History Center. Um, they typically go for about an hour and a half, two hours. Um, other regular things that we do every Thursday night, we have. Uh, ha Atheist Happy Hour and Antonio's Tex-Mex on the southbound feeder of I-35, just south of 183. Uh, those start at 7.30, go for a couple hours, and just like Sunday, it's very open, very informal. Uh, more than welcome to come down and check us out there. Um, also, every other Saturday, we have uh, our sister radio show, The Nonprofits, uh, which is hosted on atheistnetwork.com. Uh, the next show is going to be this upcoming Saturday, September 11th, um, hosted by Jeff D., uh, produced by Russell Glasser, and uh, how was last week's show? Or there wasn't actually a show last week. Uh, was, two, uh, last or, week. No, no, yeah, uh, we, there were, there so, were some, yeah, some technical reasons that yeah. there was not a show, basically. It happens but, once in a while. But there will be one, assumably, this coming week. That is our so. plan. <laughs> okay, that's every other Saturday. AtheistNetwork.com, 2 to 3.30. Uh, there's also a live chat feature on the website, um, so you can actually uh, chat while the show is on the air and get some feedback back and forth there. Why, yes. Um, all right, that is it for announcements. Ah, one more. Keep forgetting about it. Uh, relatively new announcements. Uh, we're in October 8th through 10th, uh, Friday through Sunday. Uh, there's going to be the 2004 Texas Atheist and Agnostic Conference. Um, this is going to be at uh, the Holiday Inn on Town Lake. And a couple of the guest speakers that we're going to be having are uh, Michael Newdow, who brought the Ten Commandments case, or uh, the Pledge of Allegiance case. Ten Pledge of Allegiance case, Pledge yeah. of Allegiance, yeah. Um, and Thomas Van Orden, who actually brought the Ten Commandments case, uh, trying to get the monument in Austin, Texas taken down. Um, so both those people will be speakers. Uh, we have lots of uh, different seminars and whatever lined up um, on that. Uh, if you go to our website, atheist-community.org, there will be a link there to get a little bit more detailed information on the conference, when, where, details on it, who's speaking, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but again, that's uh, beginning of October. Go to our website and you can check out details on that. Uh, I'd just like to add, we're okay. also planning on broadcasting the audio show that's right. from the conference uh, that's that right. Saturday. So uh, yeah, that's your chance to actually see internet audio in the making, <laughs> which is exciting. Okay. All right. Um, that's it for regular announcements. Jeff, what you got for us? Ah, well, um, last week we had a yes. caller who uh, set out to uh, attack what he called Western reductionist science, uh, calling it closed-minded and insisting that there are other ways of knowing that disagree with the conclusions of science yet are equally valid. Uh, now, you took some notes on exactly what that fella said. Was that Dave? Uh, yes. Was that a, that yes. was Dave? Yes, the caller's name was Dave. Um, called in in the last about half an hour of the show last week. Yeah. Um, and had some points to go over. Uh -huh. um, 
basically started off uh, started off actually with um, talking about the whole 9/11 conspiracy theory, uh -huh. a book, New Pearl Harbor. Yeah, and then kind of sectioned off that and went into the nature of evidence, as he was calling it, uh, saying that we on the show have a very narrow view of evidence. Whoa, we do. According to him. According to him, we have a very narrow definition. Yes, it's of very evidence. westernized, very empirical, what? tied to the scientific method. Uh, well, yeah. Isn't that? That would be because science is all about being really serious about what constitutes evidence that's worth paying attention to. And, and contrary to uh, so what some people would like to think, people whose pet beliefs are not supported by science, it is not a set of rules saying, well, we can't believe this, we can't believe that, we can't believe this other thing. It is a very careful analysis of the evidence uh, to determine whether that evidence really means anything or not. Go on. Please, okay. Let's take these one at a time. Okay, all right. I've got a whole thing I'm going to do here in a second, but uh, let, let's respond to his specific okay. comments. All right. um, basically, uh, another point that he makes is um, saying that Western science's idea of evidence is uh -huh. no more valid any, than any other belief system. Well, and why did he say that? Do you um, explain what he meant by that? Not exactly, no. We have, Western science has the idea of this is evidence. This is a belief form. Uh-huh. Eastern medicine, for instance, yeah. has its own idea of this is evidence. And this is our belief system. Okay. And so we believe the scientists' evidence, but we don't believe homeopathy. Yeah, well, evidence. again, it comes down to, uh, you know, it's... It, Science is not just a list of things that you're not supposed to believe or, you know, kinds of evidence that you're supposed to always throw away. It's rules about what, what, a, what evidence has to be in order for it to count. And, and I will get into more details about that later. What is this crap about American Indians? <laughs> uh, he was saying that uh, Native Americans, they had a certain religion and they interacted and lived on this land uh -huh. for 10,000 years before we ever came. Yeah. And when we came, it was still a beautiful, pristine, natural wonderland. Yeah. And then we're here for 300 years in the shithole. So? So apparently so they had a better idea. They had a better belief system on how to live in this world than we do. They had better, a, better from what I mean. Science isn't about having a pretty place to live. Yeah. Science is not about, you know, um, science is not about guaranteeing that the world is going to be pristine. That that's our job, but that's not what science is there to guarantee. Science is there to guarantee that the things we think about the world are true. Yeah. That is what science's job is. To give us facts. Yeah. I mean, okay. That's, yeah. Indians survived for a long time. Believing, here in your notes, it says, believing uh, the, a, a functional relationship with the planet based on the idea that everything is alive. Well, I'm sorry. Everything's not alive. There are some things out there that are just not alive. And to, you, you might be able to survive as a primitive nomadic culture for thousands of years with that belief going on in your culture. Certainly you could, you could survive. Certainly you're not going to have the technological power to cause damage to the environment, even assuming you wanted to, which we don't, but somehow we managed to do it anyway. Um, you know, in those thousands of years, the in American Indians went to the moon how many times? <laughs> that would be zero. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. I mean, that, that, that's, just, that's just a left field criticism of science. It has nothing to do with what science's job is. Yeah, yeah. If you what look else? at where we came from, we came from European countries, and most of them were doing pretty well as it was So, uh, at the time. Well, sure. They had survived there for thousands of years, too. I mean, yeah. that, frankly, you can point to any culture that was still around at the time yeah. you know, that, uh, that science arrived there and say, well, they lasted a long time without science because form, you know, uh, formalized science is only a few centuries old. Yeah. Yeah. So? Yeah. His idea is that he just wanted to be more open. We occasionally will say on the show that we are open to the possibility of the existence of a God. Sure. If you can provide some evidence that God exists, 
then we'll accept sure, the problem. Sure, but then here he comes with his criticism of what we will consider evidence. Exactly. You know, it's one thing to ask us to have an open mind. It's another thing for us to, to ask us to throw out all of every reasonable standard we have about what would constitute valid evidence and then ask and then say we can we can judge your wacky claim on the basis of that no we're going to we're going to be as careful and cautious as we can because we actually care what's true um should i go on with the thing now now i'm going to do my i, I okay. understand we have dave on the phone but i want to do my uh my talk first and okay. then he can come in and you know maybe i'm off base and he doesn't mean what he said but um Okay. Uh, I want to make my points. And I guess the one last thing I would go over here really quick um, yeah. before we get on to your, yeah. what you've written um, is he brought up the example of magnetism. Yes, what about Fif magnetism? 1,500 years ago, for instance, uh -huh. however long it was, yeah. uh, we had no idea of magnetism. Yes. There was no evidence for it. We sure. didn't do anything about it, didn't know about it. Sure. And then we discovered it, and now we have all these uses for it, and it's, yeah. it's very powerful. And what's his point? Could that not be the same thing with any other form of beliefs? Sure. For instance, sure. chakras. But the time to believe a thing is after there is, you know, valid, meaningful, significant, trustworthy evidence that it's actually true. Not before. You know, if we, if we were doing this show a thousand years ago, which of course we couldn't, right? Because the only reason we can do this show is because of science. But if we were doing this show a thousand years ago and some nutball came along and said, there's this thing called magnetism and we asked for evidence and we, they said, well, I don't have any. I just know that it exists and, and asked us to believe it, we would say no. And you know what? We'd be right. Because that guy, if he has no evidence for the existence of the thing he's trying to get us to believe, he's got no business believing it. That's just silly. Now, if it turns out later that it's true, great. But that becomes the point at which it makes sense to believe it. Not, yeah, not before then with, you know, um, uh, uh, well, what passes for evidence for, yeah. for some people. Yeah. Okay. Shall I go on? Yes. Okay. Um, it's clear to me that uh, that caller and a shockingly large number of people in our culture do not understand what science is, are not aware of how much it has accomplished, and are motivated primarily by a desire to have certain silly things that they believe, without any good reason, treated with respect. So what is science? Science is a collection of all the best individual techniques and insights for determining the truth that uh, humanity has ever come up with, applied systematically and with rigor. That means you don't skip these rules, you don't set aside individual uh, you know, tests for, for truth when they're inconvenient, you don't forget about them, you don't misapply them. Uh, that's what systematic and with rigor means. Uh, here's a quick overview of some of the major insights that science relies upon. I would ask the caller, and anyone else out there who agrees with him, which of these principles they find unfairly restrictive. Okay? These are not technically rules of science, right? I'm not talking about the scientific method here. I am talking about uh, basic principles of critical thinking, about telling the difference between fantasy and reality. Okay, falsifiability. If a claim is phrased or defended in such a way as to make it impossible to conceive of evidence that would prove the claim false, then the claim is meaningless and unworthy of consideration. If the evidence would be the same whether the claim were true or not, then there's no way to tell whether it is true or not. That's the falsifi falsifiability principle. Yes. Right? Yeah. Do you have a problem with that? No. I think the common one that's actually used, I don't know if it's used for that or for some other argument, uh -huh. is I think it was Dawkins who said uh, the dinosaur in the garage. Uh, that was Carl Sagan in Carl his Sagan. in okay. his book um, Sa Science as a, a as a Candle in the Dark. That's the subtitle. Okay. Uh, the title. Demon Haunted, World. Uh, Demon Demon Haunted, Haunted World. World. Thank you. Science as a Candle in the Dark. Yes, he gives an example of he's invited over to somebody's house and yeah. they say, "Ooh, I got this fire breathing dragon in my garage. Yeah. Red fire breathing dragon in my garage. Well, let's let's take a look." He goes in there. The garage is empty. Well, the guy says, "Well, my dragon is invisible." Yeah. So Sagan says, well, I wave my hands around in the air and see if I can touch it. And he says, aha, it's also intangible. Yeah. 
and saying it says, yeah, but it's fire breathing, right? So at least there should be heat. And says, aha, no, the heat from my dragon, uh, the, the flames from my dragon are heatless. And that, that, is, a, that is called uh, multiple outs. So yeah. that's a technique for dodging responsibility for false, false viability. Yeah. There, there, you have to be able to conceive of some evidence that you could find that would prove that the dragon wasn't there. If you can't, if you can't conceive of it at all, yeah. In principle, because of the way that the claim is defined, then the claim is simply bogus. It's cheating. Uh, logic. Any argument offered in support of any claim must be valid and sound. An argument is valid if its conclusion follows unavoidably from its premises, and it is sound if it is valid and its premises are true. If anybody wants to argue against the validity of logic, you may go right ahead. Um, <laughs> comprehensiveness. It's never reasonable to only consider the evidence that supports a theory, theory and discard the evidence that comp contradicts it. The existence of unanswered questions about a claim doesn't violate the rule of comprehensiveness, but ignoring rel rel uh, relevant evidence that is available certainly does. However, of course, um, and this is a criticism often leveled at scientists, uh, and unfairly, I think, one cannot simply offer the accusation that there is evidence that is not being considered without being specific about what that evidence is. Clear so far? Yes. Honesty. The evidence offered in support of a claim must be evaluated without self-deception. The rule of honesty is a corollary to the rule of comprehensiveness. When you have examined all the evidence, it is essential that you be honest with yourself about the results of that examination. Um, great example. Uh, from, I forget what show, but it was James Randi demonstrating uh, the problems with astrology to a, uh, a class yes. of college students. Yes. He yes. has the college students fill out a questionnaire and, uh, and then, um, let's see, the questionnaire is, uh, no, excuse me, he, ha uh, he asks the, the students for their, their birth signs, he hands them astrological charts that say what their sign is yeah. and the dates and Here's then a, describes describes them a detailed analysis and they're of asked that lead, that and the person. students are asked to rate how well the chart described them yeah and he gets the things back and the students are amazed they're amazed at how well these astrological charts have yeah i have described them personally only to discover james randy reveals that all of the astrological charts handed out to the class are identical Word for word. The only thing that's different yeah. is the name of the sign and the date yeah. that it's supposed to cover. Yeah. Yeah. And even after this example given to the students of how people will de deceive themselves if they are excited by a claim and they want to interpret it as being true, even after, after seeing how fallible their own interpretation of the validity of astrology is, there were students standing up and saying, well, I don't think that's, that's fair. I believe yeah. it anyway. Yeah. That's, not, that's not honest. They're not confronting the clear yeah. evidence of that experiment. Yeah. Another one that pops to mind, um, the two examples, crop circles. Crop circles! People have gotten out there and said, look, we did this. Yeah, Here's how we did it. Guys you that did it. You go out. Came out. They, they, yeah. can, they can repeat it at exactly. will. But crop circle believers refuse yeah. to accept that it was actually done by the people. Yeah who now step forward and, and, and not only claim responsibility, but show how these miraculous patterns yeah. in wheat that the believers <laughs> claimed could not be duplicated by human beings were in fact created by human beings with a board and a rope. <laughs> yeah, excellent and then, example. And then also um, Bigfoot. Uh, Bigfoot. As in the Sasquatch and everything like that. Has there been a has there been an admission? By, well, the I guy, know there's a particular film. Yes, the main film that's always used. Mm -hmm. The guy who actually did that recently died. Yeah. And his family came forward and said, "Yeah, look, it was our grandpa. He got out there with a gorilla suit." Yeah. The and problem in all those cases is not <laughs> science being closed-minded. You know, it's not science uh, having a a. Um, uh, a bias against those things. The problem is that science has actually shown, or people have come forward and admitted that those things were frauds, yeah. and yet the believers won't let go. That's the problem. Replicability. If the evidence for a claim is based on experimental results, 
or the evidence could reasonably be exp uh, explained as coincidence, then the claim must be verified by independent observers who repeat the same procedures and achieve the same results. Doesn't that seem obvious? Right? If you Just did it once, you should be able to do it again. Yeah, if, it ha if, if doing X made Y happen once, it should be able to be repeated. Right? I mean, of course, there are claims that are not of that type, right? This is, this is sp limited to claims that are of, of the form of saying, I did X and that caused Y. Yeah. Okay, if you make that claim, you have to be able to do it again. It, or some, or, or, and other people have to be able to do it again. We can't just go by your one anecdote of the one time it happened. Yeah. That doesn't mean, that's, that's not helpful. It doesn't mean anything. The burden of proof. This is such a big one, <laughs> yes. particularly for us, because Christians yeah, and religion, religious people in general, of course, Christians who we mostly argue with because they're the majority in our country, uh, are always trying to dodge this. Yes. The burden of proof always rests with the claimant. That's the person claiming that they know something to, be, to, to, be, to exist or to be the case, yeah. right? They claim that knowledge. The reason why is because the absence of disconfirming evidence is not the same as the presence of confirming evidence. Christians are always going, and other religionists are always going, you can't prove me wrong. That is not the point. You're, if you claim that you know something, it is your job then to prove it to others. And if you can't, you've got no business complaining that others won't believe you. It's your job, because you're the one who claims to know, which implies that you have evidence. If you don't have evidence, you're not going to be able to convince others, and you shouldn't expect to be able to. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. This is a big kind of science-focused issue. A claim if which, if true, would overturn an idea that appears to be highly reliable after numerous scientific tests is an extraordinary claim. Okay. That be, a lot of people don't understand this one. They think extraordinary means, you know, exciting. No, extraordinary <laughs> doesn't mean exciting. Extraordinary means uh, rare. No, actually, extraordinary doesn't mean rare. Extraordinary means, look, we've established this body of understanding, right? We've got this, this block of knowledge which we have put, put together after many years of testing and retesting and analysis and, you know, argumentation and... And it, it seems really, really solid. And you come along with an idea that blows that out of the water. Yeah. Right? Well, what that means is you've got to overcome the weight of all the existing evidence that says you're full of it. And if you can't, then you don't have enough evidence. Yeah. Right? Simple and straightforward. The one I could think of for that, which pops to mind, um, Einstein's theory of... Um Relativity, I guess. Uh -huh. As in, before that, we had gone with Newtonian saying two objects, they just have this inherent attraction between them for whatever reason. Um, Einstein came along and said, no, they actually curve space. Yeah, gravity. And that's something fundamentally different. And yes. that's... We had a lot of evidence backing up simple attraction. Yes. And so if, he, if you're going to come along and make this statement that no, our understanding of it is fundamentally wrong... You have to back that up with a heck of a lot. Which Einstein did, yes. um, you know, as well as he could. Yeah, as well as he could. And, and, and then, and then experiments then. were done that confirmed his claims. Exactly. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a scientist doing his job. He's not, he's, Einstein's not amazing just because he had the crazy white hair. Right? <laughs> Einstein is amazing because he figured out that something that was that, that, was that subtle. I mean, when you're talking about... Yeah. about uh, quantum mechanics, yeah. it's something going on very, very tiny scales that has very, very slight in, uh, uh, influence on what we see, yeah. but does happen to be true. And he saw that there were inconsistencies in the established understanding. He hypothesized what could account for those inconsistencies, put forward a theory, and it turned out to be right. And, one, yeah. and we knew that once it was confirmed by evidence. Yes. Extraordinary evidence. Personal testimony is not sufficient. Human beings can lie and make mistakes. No amount of expertise in any field is a guarantee of human infallibility, and expertise does not preclude lying. 
Therefore, a person's credentials, knowledge, and experience cannot in themselves be taken as sufficient evidence to establish the truth of a claim. Oh my gosh, you know, <laughs> there are so many people going around saying, you know, because famous person X said Y, therefore Y is true. No, it doesn't matter who said it. Yeah. You know, even stupid people can say things that are true. Likewise, smart people can say things that are wrong. Yeah. What really matters is all this other stuff. You know, it has to be, the claim has to be falsifiable, has to be logical, the evidence has to be comprehensive, it has to be evaluated honestly, it has to be uh, the results, if there's experimental uh, evidence, those results have to be uh, uh, repeatable uh, by other people doing the same experiment. The burden for, of proof for all of this uh, is on the shoulder yeah. of the person who's making the claim and the amount of evidence necessary if it's going to overturn some big body of established knowledge has to be big. Yeah. Most common with that is personal experience with God. Yes. I can't oh, prove it, but I had is, a personal so experience. Common. Yeah, right. So. I'm sorry. Yeah, you, got, you can believe whatever you want about your own personal experiences, yeah. but you've got no it's not evidence. You've got no business being offended if others do not take your your claim yeah. as proof. Because it's just not. And it's not that's not a that's not, you know, an insult to you as an individual. That is a unfortunate fact of life when it comes to human beings. We're not perfect. Uh, perception is a selective act dependent upon belief, context, expectation, uh, emotional and biochemical states, and a host of other variables. Memory is notoriously problematic, prone to a range of distortions, deletions, substitutions, and amplifications. Just read anything about the fallibility of human memory. I mean, we're, we're <laughs> yeah. here inside our skulls, and our memories seem absolutely undeniable to us. Yeah. But that's just not so. Our, our memories are just what we've recorded about what actually happened. Yeah. Doesn't guarantee that the memory is accurate. Personal testimony can only be regarded as provisionally and approximately accurate. It cannot be regarded as reliable evidence in and of itself. Finally, materialism. This is not, as many would have us believe, a prejudice against the idea of supernatural forces. Scientists, scientists are always being yeah. uh, slandered uh, in that regard, saying, well, you can't understand my way of seeing things because your, your, your philosophy of science a priori rejects the idea that anything supernatural could be going on. That's not true. Scientists test supernatural claims all the time. However, the force that you're talking about, the supernatural force you're talking about that you want science to test, has to be conceived of as operating in an understandable and predictable way. Forces that cannot be understood or predicted cannot, by definition, be tested for. Because how do you know? Yeah. Right? I mean, this is why uh, I, I have an essay on my, on my website um, uh, on this particular issue. I mean, suppose you've got uh, um, two chemicals, right, in certain proportions, and you mix them together 100 times, and 99 times out of 100, you get the, the result is a you know muddy green goo, yeah. right? Okay, if you if you uh, set aside concerns about mysterious individual supernatural entities fiddling with the results for reasons that we can't understand, and I'm talking God here, right? If you if you set aside the idea that God might have had some special personal reason why. Yeah. That one hundredth mixture shouldn't come out the same, right? Then what you've got is a body of evidence that you can evaluate on the basis of the results. You can say, well, we don't necessarily know why the last one didn't turn out the same, but it is fair to say that if you mix these two things together in these proportions, you're going to get the green goo. Yeah. If you insist on keeping in play the idea that there's mysterious, invisible things wafting around with their own agendas, fiddling with experimental results, you can't draw any conclusions. It's just as likely that the first 99 were the result of supernatural influence, if that's the 
the conditions yeah. that we have to accept when we do the experiment. That is what materialism in science means. It means, look, we're not claiming absolutely for sure that there are no invisible supernatural entities fiddling with the results. It's just we can't possibly account for that. We can't set up a, con you know, a, a control experiment over here where that's not going to happen because we don't know that those mysterious entities can't go over there and screw with the, with the, uh, uh, with the, control. With, with the control experiment. We don't know that. There's no way to know that. So we ignore it. That's it, period. That is all materialism means in science. Science merely says that if a claim is supported by all of these principles, then you are justified in, in placing considerable confidence in it. This is not a guarantee that the claim is true. Just because you've examined all the evidence today is no guarantee that there will not be new and disconfirming evidence available tomorrow, for example. But it does guarantee that you have good reasons for believing the claim, and it guarantees that you have sold your belief for a fair price. All of these uh, are, are fine ideas, many of which have been known to and, uh, and uh, of help to humanity throughout recorded history. But ever since all of these techniques were first brought together and systematized as what we call science, humanity has benefited even more greatly from them. The acceleration of human knowledge and technology since the introduction of formal science is undeniable by anyone with a basic knowledge of human history. It always astonishes me when an adult calls our show to denigrate science. Don't they realize that the only reason they can see our show and call in to complain is because they have a television and a telephone? Applications of the principles of electricity discovered and mastered by science? Aren't they aware that if they're over 25, they're already past the average life, human life expectancy before the arrival of science-based medicine? Can they name even one human achievement of equal significance and power that was accomplished by some other way of knowing, not based on the core principles of science? The answer is no. And yet they insist that science is somehow overrated. While science earns respect for itself by benefiting mankind in obvious and major ways, it marginalizes the myths and superstitions that these people are still clinging to. Rather than bringing their own beliefs in line with a rational examination of all the available evidence, they choose to attack the very idea of rationally examining evidence. They want their own ridiculous beliefs treated with equal respect, and they're willing to ignore centuries of human progress to do it. That's Excellent. That's what I have to say to that guy. <laughs> so now, I guess he's on the line. Okay. Well, uh, yes, we are a live call-in show. We are live today. It's September 5th. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, go ahead and give us a call. The phone number will be on your screen momentarily. Uh, first, we're going to go ahead and talk to Dave. How are you doing? Hey, guys. Hi, Dave. Dave. Uh, I can't hear you. Are uh, you. Hello? Can you hear us? Hello. Your, your science has hello. failed you. I have no audio. <laughs> yeah. Well, Control we have video. On the phone or on the screen. What's happening? All right. Well, we'll try to solve that technical problem and... Okay, we're going to second. put you on hold for a couple minutes. I'm sorry, I still I see mouths moving, but I have no sound. I'm so sorry. Uh, control okay. room, do you yeah, see? There we are. Yeah, Hello? We're talking. Can you hear All us? Right. Yep, yeah, gotcha. Okay. All right, something going on okay. in the control room. I would point out Thank you, you still had video, which, uh, you know, is proof enough of science's <laughs> amazing. Yeah, well, actually, powers. Jeff, you're incredibly upset about nothing. I didn't say a word about science. I agree with you 100%. I don't, uh, we have I don't know where quotes. that came we from. Have some, well, we have some, uh, some of your statements the here quotes. written down. Uh, you yeah, claim actually, that actually, we have a very that, narrow you, view of evidence. What did you mean by that? Well, first of all, let me, cl let me clear up what I didn't mean, just because of your incredibly emotional tirade there, which I actually kind of enjoyed. But I, yeah. I think science um, is absolutely valid. I love science. I'm a, I have a minor in physics, actually. Uh -huh. um, yeah, don't get me wrong. I had no problem with science. So I'm just, I would just like you to explain yeah. your criticism that we have a narrow view of evidence. What do you mean? No problem. Uh, but I do have to, I, I do have one more preface I have to sneak in. Okay. Uh, my, my call was never about God. I have no use for Christianity, the Bible, That's or fine. Christians. Okay. That's fine. Blood soaked. I don't care. God. I don't care. Okay. I want to know what you meant by accusing us of having a narrow view of evidence. Okay, great. Actually, uh, t 
to, vi- to be very clear, very specific, I never said those exact words. What I meant yes. and said yeah. was that the way you treat evidence, you know what, I back up, I did say narrow view, but what I meant was that you treat evidence in a kind of a narrow way, as if it's all there is. And I just well, can't well, go with what, that. What, what do you think there is besides evidence? No, 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 no. It, your view of evidence... Well, you just, you just criticize us now of acting as if evidence was all there was. No, what no, else no. Is your there? view of evidence. Your, your, your view of evidence is all there is. Okay, I think your what else is there? definition of evidence is a little fine for me. A little it's broader. So, My definition so you, of evidence is So you think broader. that we should have a looser definition of evidence? Uh, let's we should be broader. less serious about being really, you know, specific about what counts and what doesn't? Um, I think I know what you just said, yes. But I, I, okay. I want to use the word just, broader. Okay, less, broader. Less yeah. stringent, basically. Okay, in what way? In the sense that, it, it, just that th- this idea of evidence is tied very closely to, to Western European I don't care what it's tied to. What's wrong with it? I'm telling you, it's tied to Western European based and that's, thinking. And that's wrong? Yeah. Well, Why is that wrong? It's not wrong, it's incomplete. Okay, I what else is there? I think it's broader than that. Okay. okay. Broader in go what on. way? In, in the way that, let's go back to the magnetism thing. Now, yeah. understand, I, ha- I don't know, I don't have a year when we first, I know for a fact that it wasn't 1,500 years ago, which we were using last week, bantering around. I know that's wrong. Yeah. It's much longer ago than that. I think the Greeks played with magnetism. Anyway, way, way back, magnetism existed before we even suspected. Sure, of course. Play oh, with there it. are many, many things that exist that we know nothing about. Right. That's your point. And they have, for us, no evidence. You see what I'm saying? Wait, because well, they exist already. Wait, what? These things. Mag- oh, yeah, sure. We have, yeah, sure. And what should what should we think about things for which we have no evidence whatsoever? Well, be- because the thing exists and we have no evidence for it. Yeah. Right at the time, we're not even looking for evidence because we don't even suspect it exists. Possibly. There are some things that we suspect exist that we don't have evidence for. I mean, there's all, all kinds of different things. Yeah, there's all kinds of things. That's why I'm using a specific example. All right. Magnetism. Yeah. Or anything. Electricity. I don't know. Magnetism. It exists, and we don't know about it, and we have no evidence of it because we're not even looking for it. Okay, and? It nevertheless exists. And? So we, at the time... Yeah. If somebody, like you said, walks up and tells you about it, yeah. you would probably deny that it's true sure. because you have no evidence. Sure. So and your definition of evidence is too small. No, 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 no. no, no, no. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. See, that's, I, I use that specific example. I think absolutely the correct stance to take. If somebody walks up to you with some claim that's you know, rather extreme, like magnetism a thousand years ago, right? Uh, if somebody walks up to you with a claim that's, that's that out of the blue, and asks you to believe it, but cannot provide any evidence whatsoever, then refraining from belief is exactly the correct position to take. In fact, if you go ahead and agree that that guy is telling the truth without anything to go on other than his personal testimony, you're an idiot. This is true whether he happens to be right or not. Yeah, th- exactly. See, this is what happened last week, too. Russell and I agreed, even though he, ke- he kept thinking we weren't agreeing. This is what happened. <laughs> so what? Did, wait, well, but the, what would be your so explanation? What's wrong with our? What's wrong? No, see, I, what? In what sense is our definition of evidence too narrow now? It's in in this sense that it's okay. What I no, please don't cut him no, off. No, no, actually, actually it's hard I, I, I think Ashley understands what this guy. Uh, Ashley, don't well, cut him off. But I think Ashley understands what I'm saying. I'd like to hear his question. Well, I'm trying to think what would have been the proper response 1,500 years ago. If somebody had said, you know, I've got these two rocks, they just want to stick together. No, no, no. He hasn't got the okay, rocks. Okay, there isn't he has the rocks, he has evidence. I've got this theory that two rocks will go together for okay, some right. reason. Let, let's what would say, have been let's the say proper... he had one time, he said, oh, these two rocks jumped together. Yeah, and, right. you know, and it's witchcraft or something. Yeah, what, sure. what, what would have been the proper response for him? Well, I, th- this is what I'm saying. The same thing happened last week. Russell and I agreed, and now Jeff and I agree, even though he doesn't understand well, what, that we wait, agree. What are we agreeing on? When you said he, you, you, if you immediately believe the uh-huh. guy, yeah. you're incorrect. I agree. 
Okay. Right. So if in you, what if sense? You, if so you, then, if you uh, hesitate to believe without yeah. evidence, I agree. Yeah. Here's where we part ways. Okay. In general, and I'm talking in general, very generally, I'm, at, I'm off of magnetism now to a much bigger topic, that there's a tendency on your part, and like I said last week, and I'm by yours, I mean atheist community. Sure, that's fine. To, to kind of close the door as opposed to leaving it a little open. Because well, there may yet come evidence of magnetism. You see what I mean? There may okay. yet come evidence this is of... A common, this is a common accusation that people of a scientific worldview get. And it's a lie. That is just not true. Now, we will be very serious about, you know, idea X that has a huge amount of experimental evidence uh, uh, stockpiled supporting it, right? Something that has been relied upon for, for decades or centuries by scientists, right? Mm -hmm. Gravity, whatever, right? I mean, t t magnetism. Uh, now, if somebody were to come to us and say, no, no, no. You see, magnetism doesn't work at all like the way you think it does. Magnetism is actually the result of invisible pixies pulling those rocks together. Invisible, intangible pixies. We're going to call that person an idiot. Not because we know absolutely f for sure that, you know, nowhere in the universe could that possibly be true, because we don't know that there aren't invisible pixies, right? What we do know is that there are, there's, there, are, there are centuries of accumulated evidence showing that magnetism works according to these known principles. And we're really serious about that. We think it matters. We think that people who don't play the odds and go with what the vast weight of evidence indicates are fools. And we're going to say so. And we're not going to be apologetic about it. But if you come along and say, therefore, because we will come back at somebody and say, no, uh, you know, you're an idiot for believing this thing without, without any evidence and against the weight of all the evidence that exists, that therefore we have closed the door and cl are claiming that we absolutely know anything for sure, you're wrong. That's a lie. You see, we have, we have reasons to believe the things we believe really solid, rational, evidence-based reasons. Those right. count. Those give, us, those give us ammunition. We damn well are going to tell people who want to fly in the face of that that, you know, they've got a big job cut out, ahead, uh, uh, cut out for them to prove their case. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's it. Kind of, it's kind of folks work. like you overreact when we, when we take a serious stance on something. First of all, yeah. I... I, I I, I have no limit to the amount that I resent folks like you. Well, folks like you, I don't I know mean, what you're talking uh, about. Uh, well, yeah, the thing that you did that set me off was you was you made this attack on Western reductionist science, and that's the kind of folks I'm talking about. Because you're not alone. There are a lot of people out there that have a problem with Western reductionist science. And I think where and you're actually getting with this, or, or <laughs> your your initial view, was. Not so much, perhaps, our views of evidence, but that we are closing the door to, yeah. again, throwing out an example, ESP. Thank you. Um, the, we have good reasons, though, for saying that when somebody comes along with a claim of ESP, for saying, no, that's going to be bunk. Because most science, we have other scientific explanations of how things work. This doesn't fit with any of them. There's no evidence to prove it. There have been studies on it that have shown it to mean nothing at all. Yeah, it and, cannot and, be reproduced. And, and I would add... So we not, have good reason not to believe these things. Not only does the existing evidence not support the claims, in spite of centuries of parapsychological research, which has utterly failed to prove its claim, but the implications of the claim, if true, fly directly in the face of a lot of things that are known to be true. Now, again, it's possible that what we know to be true about physics isn't true, and that there's room for these, para, pa, these paranormal things, right? And that they're true, and that some formulation of theory is going to show that those are actually true. That's possible. But now is not the time to believe those things. And anybody who believes it in, w with, with, uh, you know, without any without sufficient evidence to establish that it's true, in the face of, the, of evidence that shows that it's not, you know, those people are in the wrong, not scientists for saying, look, dude, you know, that's silly. Again, I've never, never once said last week or this that science was wrong about anything. I'm saying that they're incomplete. 
Well, I'm still waiting for you to explain what it is that uh, well, what it is the else that it's not taking into well, account. Well, for example, for example, let's talk about um, let's bring it up to date a bit. Tachyons. Okay. Should I won't pretend I know anything about them because it, I don't. There's not that mu actually. There's not that much to know. They're, they're the detection system for tachyons has been they're they're theoretical. Okay. And they've been possibly detected, possibly not. The detection systems are still underway. The point is, yeah. let's say they do exist, just yeah. for the argument. Yeah. All of all this time, our technology was not up to detecting them. Sure. So we had no evidence. Sure. And basically that, in a sense, for the atheist community, this is, I'm patching together two things that don't patch together very well here, but the atheist community would, would close the door. And I just... No, no, we ago, wouldn't. I thought I, said, yeah. I thought I just explained. I thought I just explained that that accusation. Well, that's, and that's is a right. lie. But that accusation is a lie, ago. sir. Let me finish. That thought, accusation please. is a lie. We don't can close I, the door on anything. Can I, I, I applaud scientists who, uh, seeing a gap in our knowledge that needs to be filled, and with a worked-out hypothesis of what the answer might be, building machines to try to detect the thing that they think it might be. I applaud that work. That is good scientific work. All I'm asking is to finish this thought. Go ahead. When I and and when I when you were saying that a second ago, and you you said. It could be blank, 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 blank. It could be this. It could be that. That this is what brought up my call last week. Is that as I've watched the show, uh, you know, I've, I've been watching you guys for a couple years now since the like Martin days, and I just have not heard enough of that. It could be this. It could be that. It's more kind of because we're having a you know a discussion of it right now. You're, you're, your your thoughts about it are broadening out a bit, so you're no, saying things no, like it no, could be no, this. No, or no, this no. is always the case. But we, why no. should we? Why should uh, okay? Setting science aside now, right? What uh, I mean, what advantage is there to um, making a big show of entertaining notions that are? Based on everything we know now, very likely not true. You know, I mean, sure, we're no, nobody here is claiming to be omniscient, but that's you know, you're you're acting as if, as if uh, you're, you're speaking as if uh, we have a responsibility every time we say what we think the facts are, to put a little disclaimer every time. That's just unreasonable. <laughs> yeah, that's ridiculous. You know, no, I mean, uh, no. and, and not even every time, but like often. I don't even think. No, I think, I'm not. I'm I think not. often enough for you to have noticed it in two years of watching the show is too much. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I mean, I, we are serious about what the truth is. Yes, of course, we're aware. What we know could be incomplete. Could be way off the mark. There could be explanations for things that are utterly different, but happen to have fit all the tests that have been done so far. And it could be a wild misinterpretation. We, we can't say that we know that for sure. What we can say is that, you know, we're going, we're playing the odds, right? And the odds are way, way, way in favor of what science discovers. Yeah. They just are. I mean, if the uh, reason I, I, I have to disagree with yeah. that, but that's okay. Well, the well, reason the reason we can sometimes I've been be trying hard, to get a straight answer out of you about any of these things. The reason we can sometimes be uh, hard not on certain ideas is again the fact that going back to the tachyon example, there aren't people out there saying you must believe in them and, uh, I, and not just the, uh, yes, I agree. Going on and on and on and on and on about it, but saying we have no proof, we have no evidence, but you should believe anyway. Right. Yeah. That's what the other people are doing, and we're saying until you get some evidence, until you get some proof. Shut up. And that's why I'm glad you guys are here. In fact, that's why I'm a fan of the show, because this is where we're, I'm on your side, absolutely. I don't want them telling me anything about my beliefs, and, and you guys are the same way. Show me the evidence, right? I agree, 100%. In fact, it's more like this is even a non-God issue. Remember, if you start well, I, I know, actually, I know. We, just, we brought the God thing in because we're trying to keep this relevant to atheists. Yeah, exactly. Right? That's why I'm sort of tying it back, too. But at, at some point... Uh, this became about the nature of evidence, and really, to tell you the truth, you, you talked about the disclaimer thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna get off here because I know you got a million callers. But yeah. the thing about a minute ago about the disclaimer idea, yeah, I'm not your presentation of your information outwardly. Yeah. I'm not concerned with that at all. I'm, what I'm actually saying is, I've seen in your thinking a bit, and it made me a little concerned to be quite honest. 
I was a little concerned that maybe you guys are shorting yourselves philosophically and sociologically, and you're not looking out the window enough. You're just looking straight ahead. You know, I'm a, it made I, me a little concerned. I, I am a fan of comic books, of fantasy literature, what of science fiction. Okay, I'm, I am immersed every minute of my life. I'm, I'm in the computer games industry, right? So every day at work, what I'm doing is playing with fantastical concepts, right? But I don't think any of it's true. Uh, I, I'll, but I'll, I'll happily entertain the notions for for entertainment purposes only, you know. Uh, right. And 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 if 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 there's ever evidence that proves something is true, we'll be the first to agree that it's true. See, this is again, we agree. We just don't know we do. Well, we you agree. Know, um, that's that's what I'm saying. That I want. I, I was just worried that you guys didn't feel that way. I felt like, geez, yeah. maybe they've got blinders on and they're not seeing it. Yeah. Well, one more very yeah. quick well, thing, and then I'm off here. Uh, last week, the okay. whole reason this Quite started is because Russell time. said, I, we, somebody called about 9-11, and, and Russell just threw his hands in the air. I'm not gonna, I can't listen to this again, and this terrible, yeah. and there's no evidence. And we're not going to get on to 9-11 again in this show. <laughs> yeah, we're not. Yeah, and that was the whole point. That, that, no, but that's what brought it up is what I'm saying. Yeah. Because yeah. he had that knee-jerk reaction. Yeah. And if, if you're interested yeah. in evidence, he wasn't even interested in considering evidence. He didn't yeah. want to hear it. Okay. And that made me think, ooh, ooh, blinders. Yeah. Okay. okay, anyway, good show. Thank you very much, and I'll, uh, I'll be uh, in okay. touch. All right, thanks a lot for calling. Bye-bye. Um, mm -hmm. You were saying before that you work in computer games, and so it's for entertainment purposes only. And I think we'd have a little bit less stringent of a show and, and being so hard-nosed about it if churches and John Edwards would prominently claim for entertainment purposes only. You know, and, and I'll say something else. I mean, I, I, I talk about, you know, thinking about fantastical things for entertainment purposes, but you know, one thing I've discovered about atheists, after I haven't hung out with them for, you know, socially for about ten years, is atheists have, a, have very playful minds when it comes to um, supernatural claims, yeah. it, and and not just playful, but like uh, really agile minds when it comes to ideas like that. I have never heard the claims of Christianity considered so seriously in terms of what the ap actual implications would be if they were true, yeah. in terms of what the evidence would have to be if they were true, as I get from listening to atheists talking about religion. Yeah. You know, it's a, cr yeah. Christians and other theists, sorry, there's, the, there's that disclaimer, which I am going to make every time. Uh, believers like to, you know, stay in the realm of these flowery, floofy, you know, nonspecific kind of vague emotional discussions about their beliefs and never get down to the nitty gritty of what exactly does that mean? You know, like, how high were the bodies piled in Sod Sodom and Gomorrah? You know, I mean, the, the actual implications, if the things they believe were true, what would those be? What would that mean? Yeah. They never look at it. Yeah. Atheists look at it all the time. So, you know, for some guy to call us and claim that we are the stodgy ones who are not taking things, you know, uh, beyond our own personal beliefs seriously, that's just false. And insulting, and you know, I'm I'm, I'm pretty tired of it. <laughs> All right, well, we can go on to other callers and see what they have to say. And uh, I believe we have Fabian. Yes. Okay. Hi. How can um, you help you? I have a experience with an angel. Do you? I retired after 25 years from the Austin State School, but in '96. I was working as the bus monitor at Reagan High School and also still working at the Austin State School. And one morning, I left work. I had to be at work at the school at 6.25. I left there at 6.15. It was pouring down rain. And I prayed. I said, St. Michael, please help me because I couldn't see which lane to get into that I could exit safely. Okay. And all of a sudden, the rain ceased, and it ceased until I went to Reagan Field and got on my bus 
and then it started again. Okay. So that, wait, so hold it. That sounds um, like a break in the rain, though. Uh, yeah, how long have you lived so. in Austin? That happens all the time. <laughs> we have these bizarre little well, thunderstorms that are like 100 know. yards across. <laughs> Why was that an angel? Did you see an angel? Yes. You saw an angel? Okay. Yes. What did it look well, like? I envisioned an angel. No, no, no. Did okay. you see yeah. an angel? Was there one there? Like no, sitting next to you or putting your, I, like, putting I, your I lane or something? Michael the Archangel. You know, I... I so Every time I have a problem, I I pray to him, and somehow things seem to come okay. out all right. But again, the explanation you're offering for a break in the rain is pretty substantial. You're saying that some otherworldly being, you know, Saint Michael came down and made it stop raining yeah. for you, verse for you verse, personally, exactly. Versus the fact that whenever we have a thunderstorm, it stops. And, and again, we do have, you know, weather things going on where well, yeah. it's raining one minute Necessarily, and it just stops. eventually the thunderstorm stops. I think Ashley's point but is yeah. it's extremely common in Austin for there to be these exactly. weird little pockets of thunder, uh, you know, pour, downpours coming down. Exactly. You drive through them for like 15 seconds and suddenly they're gone. Okay. You know, I it just happens all the time. How do you know this thing. was an angel Simpler just because you prayed first? Things happen. Um, my tire needed. Needed no, air. Uh, can we can we stick yeah. to one angel claim at a time, please? No, no, wait a minute. My tire needed air, and I I'm not real good at mechanical things. And I, okay. I before I left the house, I said, "Please God, please let there be somebody that can show me how to put the air in my tire." Okay. I drove my car over to the Shell station, and there was a car. Oh my gosh, there was somebody at the Shell station who knew how to put air in a tire? There was a young man there, and he said, Are you serious, man? I help you. And I said, Would you please? I think she's messing with us. Wait a minute. There was a beer. You can't seriously believe it because there was a guy who knew how to put air in your tire at a gas station that that was a miracle. And. I went in and I said, I want to thank that young man. I want to give him some money, you know, for putting the air in my tire. And they said, there was nobody there. The beer guy, the beer truck <laughs> said, nobody <laughs> was there. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. I've right. had many experiences like that. Okay. I mean, well, not we're going to go ahead and let you go. Things, okay. But, I've got this little yeah. thing I read before about... Personal testimony not sufficient to establish the truth of a claim. Do, we, do I need to read that to you? Yeah. I do? Okay. You can lie and you can make mistakes. <laughs> Just because it doesn't matter how, it doesn't matter what your credentials are, you, the uh, testimony of an individual is not I'm sufficient a, to I'm establish a, a claim. I'm a year old woman. <laughs> doesn't matter. And we're not, and we're not saying that you're and lying. It's not because it's you. It's because yeah. you're a human being, and yeah. human beings make mistakes. Uh, and we're not saying that you're lying. We're saying it's a mistake <laughs> or a strange way of looking at things. But we're going to go ahead and let you go. We've got other callers on the line. All right. Thanks a lot for calling. Have a good evening. You too. All right. Perfect example. <laughs> All right, let's go on to, to some other colors. I'm uh, going to go ahead and go to Russell really quick and uh, see what yes, he's got to say. Yeah, I think he has a comment. Russell, how you doing? Hi, guys. Hi. So I got accused of uh, when a conspiracy theory caller called in. Uh-huh. I threw up my hands and said, I refuse to listen yeah. to your evidence. Don't want to look at it. Well, actually, uh, Dave didn't say that. He didn't say you threw up your hands and said... You didn't want you, you. You could not listen to the evidence. Uh, that's he, what said, I he said. He said Russell did not want to hear the evidence. What? So he was reading your mind. <laughs> and just like just like he knows that you know atheists don't want uh, that uh, that we have closed minds when it comes to other ways of knowing than apart from uh, Western reductionist science. He just knows. <laughs> <laughs> what what you're willing to hear and what you're not willing to hear. Yeah, well, when the guy called in and he started to go off on the conspiracy theory, I basically preempted him and described what I thought he was about to say. Uh-huh. Um, and basically and, said that you agreed and, with and some then, of it, just not And then it. put it in a way so that it sounded ridiculous. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, you know, if we're being accused of poking fun at people who we think believe things that are just utter, utterly frickin' ridiculous, guilty! 
Guilty. I will happily poke fun at people who believe things I think are utterly ridiculous. Yeah. Um, if, you're, if we're being accused of not being infinitely patient when we hear this kind of nonsense over and over and over again, guilty. Guilty. I don't have infinite patience. I'm not going to sit here and listen to the same ridiculous claims over and over and over again. And it's not, it's, you know, oh, well, you know, the, the, the uh, conspiracy theorist A's claim is probably a little different from conspiracy theorist B's. Yeah, but it, five words out of their mouth, you know where they're coming from. And yeah. it's where they're coming from that's the problem. Yeah. They're coming from the land of no evidence, of believe some authority because they say so. You know, they're, they're coming from the land of ignore all these rules about how you do science. Yeah. About how you think rationally in the first place. Screw science. You know, I mean... And if there is evidence for stuff that's, that last lady. that's usually pertinent to the show, we she usually do look at it. experience with an angel. Didn't actually see one. Envisioned one. That's how she knew that it was an, <laughs> there was an angel involved, because yeah. she thought of one. Yeah, yeah that was a riot. Amazing. And, Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. I mean, when you hear that kind of stuff, there is no, there is no need to take, you know, let him go on forever about it. Yeah. And there's no re need for us to listen to conspiracy theorists nutballs over and over and over again just to prove we're not biased. Yeah. Right. You know, you, we got you rules. you ever notice that the people who promote conspiracy theories the most tend to be people in society who are in the least position to actually have any idea what's going on? Yeah. Well, that may be the case. I but even outside of conspiracy theories, whenever there are studies which don't happen all that often, and often for fairly obvious reasons, but whenever there are studies of ESP, psychic phenomena, astrology, whatever, we usually do look into those to a certain extent. Sure. At least find out about it. And so we're not saying, I refuse to read any evidence that God exists or ESP exists or whatever. We're saying, we have looked at the evidence, and that's the reason why we're saying it's complete bogus. Yeah. And because we I, have looked I, at the I told evidence. the caller that uh, I had read the Project for a New American Century exactly. materials and that I thought it was possible or even likely that there was something there. I do not simply dismiss things out of hand because they're conspiracy. Right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. But, you know, I care, I don't care so much about what the claim is. I care how the person who's making the claim arrived at that claim. And yeah. it's usually really obvious right up front whether they are thinking rationally or not. You know, whether they've got any evidence or not. That's what matters. It is not our fault that the vast majority of people who we're going to call conspiracy theorists, uh, you know, we're calling them that because the first five words out of their mouth, we know that it's, it, that it, you know, that they are not thinking clearly when they decide to believe the things that they believe. No. It's right. the way they present it. It's what they say about it. That, that's the issue. Okay. All right. Well, that's all I had to say. Okay. Thanks a lot for calling. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Russell. <laughs> all right. See, you know, uh, yeah, I love how the how, <laughs> how Dave was so offended that you know I lumped him in in with other people that say said the same words that he said, but he's willing to tell us what we believe and accuse us on the basis of the things that he uh, things that he uh, imagines are going on inside our heads. Yeah. That's nice. Okay, on to more callers. Uh, we have got David. How you doing? Hey, how are you? Yeah, uh, pretty good. I'm uh, just going on uh, talking about the psychological effects of believing in something or you know a, a greater power of the human psyche. How that can benefit somebody. Okay. Um, so I'm, saying, so I'm not saying I'm an atheist, yeah. but I understand. I guess their need to believe in some kind of higher power to see them through their life. Yeah. And I can definitely understand that, but I also think I would kind of put that in the same category as a crutch. You don't learn to live and deal with being on crutches. You use that as something to help you get over the injury. The, right. the well, ultimate goal well, is injury, to work off say of like them. like great peril, like somebody's in, you know, they're in war and they're pinned down in a bunker, they're getting yeah. shot at, et cetera, et cetera. If they didn't calm down or if they didn't believe yeah. in something that would make them calm down, yeah. they would probably eventually... It is possible. hurting themselves or getting shot because they weren't acting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it is possible. Acting with a conscious mind because I, I, whatever, I love... whatever they believe in, it's a chemical effect. You know, they believe in something that has something. Their body releases a chemical into their body and calms them down. Yeah, are there studies that show that that is the case? 
Sure, yeah. Uh, there are? Yeah, oh, yeah. There's there's even studies that show laughter can... can no, no, no. But, but I'm, I'm talking specifically now religious belief. Because I am not aware of studies that show that religious belief is this... Um, you know, absolutely vital, necessary thing for people in certain cases. It's not I know that, that a lot of people claim that it is. Survival of in a in a in a you know in a stressful situation or a yeah. life-threatening situation, they're more likely to come through it if they believe in something yeah. of a higher power. And I think in that case, that doesn't. and I think in that case, religion is just another tool, which other things can have the same thing. Other people have. For instance, I don't have a religious belief. You know, right. if I'm under fire, you know, I would assume that I'm not going to go back to the, oh my God, help me, you know, I, I believe and get me through yeah. this and I'll believe in you forever. It's just one of the tools that you could use. Now, I would probably use something different, which would give the same effect. And so the fact that they want to use religion, I disagree with it. But if it's something that, that that's what they turn to and they make a ben and they get a benefit from that, I agree with that. Yeah, I don't necessarily you know, agree I, that it's a good I, thing, but I agree with it. That could be true, right? I mean, um, but if it's true that some people need that, it's only some people. I was uh, I participated in the uh, uh, Unbelievers March on Washington a Godless few Americans. years. Godless Americans March in Washington. Yeah. Thank you. A few years ago, and I personally witnessed. I think it was sixty Gulf War veteran atheists standing up there, yeah. right? Most of which had seen combat duty, and were atheists. So right. you know, uh, certainly we cannot extend this to everybody. No, and no, when no. It comes, it's not, I mean, it's it's, and, it's cases of where people are religious versus that that are that are more scared to do anything, like they don't have a religious belief. And because, or they don't know what's going to happen to them when they die, they're not likely to make uh, a crucial. They can't make a crucial decision in a time of, you know, a uh, life-threatening situation. Well, I, I would love to see the um, the uh, psychological test results that that uh, show definitively that that's the case. Because you know, we hear so often from believers about this or that or the other reason why it's absolutely vital to mankind that religion survive, and um, they're really emotionally committed to their religion. I certainly agree with that. Right. But it makes me skeptical of the validity of many of their claims. You know, it's really easy to say why I couldn't have got through that if it wasn't for my belief in Jesus. Right. But I don't know that it's really that they really couldn't have got through that thing, whatever it was, without their belief in Jesus. They're just telling me that it was. I, I right. Don't know well, that. It, yeah. How do I know that? I do experience. know that yeah. a lot of human beings don't need that. But in the studies that I'm that I'm saying, they're they're looking at the actual the chemical state of a person's mind. Uh, they're looking. They're putting them in, in stressful situations, or through either simulation, what? or they're monitoring their, their you know their their can you their can you can you, can you direct heart, me to something? Is there anything on the web about this? What's that? Can you direct me to any source of information on this at all? Do you, is there is it a book, uh, um, TV no, show, I mean, something on I've, the web? What I've studied is you know just Google it on the web and and look at the psychological uh, I guess ramifications of believing in something. And there's there's independent studies. There's been studies by uh, more military you know military operations, uh, government funded. Uh, things like that. Okay. Well, I will. I will. Uh, and again, that. But th there's there's a. Th I'm sorry, man. There's one other point that I want to make, which is sure. that you know, uh, even if that is the case, then I'd want to know. The next thing I want to know is, well, are there alternative ways of ch achieving the same result? Because, there is um, uh, one person. There, uh, there's another crutch, so to say, and that would be hope through a situation. Uh, if you can have, I mean. Any decent human being is going to have hope, no matter what they believe in, that they're yeah. going to get out of the situation. And if they can tell themselves that enough, that they can calm themselves down enough to make that decision. And yeah. they said it, the hope can be, you know, family, friends, uh, uh, just, you know, to see through the situation. But more than likely, uh, most people turn to religion. Yeah. yeah. Well, well it's, that, that's it's real common in our in our culture. Exactly. You know, the, the I don't really have a problem with um with uh using religion as an emotional crutch like that, 
right? That's, that's, to me, that's not the problem with religion. The problem with religion is all the baggage of ridiculous beliefs that, ha that come along with it, right? All the right. other stuff that your brain gets loaded up with um, that you have to believe in order for the religion to have that psychological effect. So right, what right. I would hope is that we could, well, here I am hoping, uh, was that we could isolate other much more healthy ways of people uh, dealing with stressful emotional situations. Yeah. Basically, well, they found, going back yeah. to what you were saying about hope, they found a coping mechanism that says if they're under, you know, if they're under a high stress situation, they can see a way out of this, and their way out is God's going to save me. He will protect me. Whether that's true or not, it's still something that they believe. It's a coping mechanism that they have. Another coping mechanism could be to say, well, I'm going to dig down a little bit deeper. And right, I'm right. going gonna, I'm gonna to do something I mean, practical to try and save my life here and get out well, of the situation. That could have the same I guess, effect. would be political. I mean, uh, Bush is faith-based and in, in community initiative. Yeah. Uh, faith-based uh, operations that deal with people that, you know, have hard times that are addicted to drugs. Yeah. Uh, have you know some kind of perilous situation in their life show better success in turning those people around they have a better turnaround rate of those people you know finding actually being decent human beings in reality a lot of the, I have seen a couple of different studies based on that general theme maybe not drugs specifically uh, but I can that specifically. One specifically and they do show they usually it's they'll throw out evidence as in, for one of them, yeah. I don't know if this was... Um, this but. was uh, one of the Watergate conspirators, Colson, mm -hmm. I think, okay. is run, runs a prison ministry, and uh, his uh, efforts were put up as a shiny example by the Bush administration for why this is such a good idea. Well, if you look at the statistics, what they did was uh, they showed the recidivism rate, right, the odds of going back to prison for right. graduates from their program. Right. But you know what they, how they defined a graduate for their program? Was well, somebody they, they who graduated got, and didn't come back. Yeah, I, I, well, no, 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 so no, 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 no. that bad. It was a little more subtle than that. It was some, uh, it, you had to uh, go out of prison and get a job. Well, Correct. the odds of not going back to prison if you get out of prison and you get a job, are already really good. If you look at all the statistics of all the people that took their course, and don't just limit it to those people, then, in fact, they had a worse rec recidivism rate than people who didn't take any course at all. Right, right. They okay. had their qualifier so, was, was uh, kind of... So, I mean, that, that uh, I have yet to see reliable ways, evidence that that, that, I mean, that kind of stuff actually works they, at all. Huh? People go to that and say, well, look, this is the case that it's not true. I mean, I think it was like 30%. And then if he did that, if he did the, the qualification that they had for it, and if you looked at others, it was like 15. But that was in one case of one study. I but seen other one. studies have shown the same thing throughout, you know, uh, jails throughout the country. Not just that one. That was one that they can nitpick. And I've seen other ones that that show the return rate without the without that qualifier that you mentioned but still uh, the, the uh, whole I'm not aware of that the situation into it. still remains outside of this even that i would prefer to see some system in place where we teach them you know how not to go back to prison how to get off drugs whatever the case may be without relying on invisible magic beings to help you do it I would rather see, here's a real solid reason why you shouldn't do this. Here's real solid benefits and such like that. Right. Um, as to why not doing that behavior or doing a different behavior is a good thing to do. Um, right. it's, it's always kind of the fear that if you teach them that God doesn't want you to do this, God wants you to do that, and the reason, you know, God, 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 God. And then eight months later, they, you know, they decide that, well, there is no God then all the reasons that you've just given them just go out the window with it. Whereas if you say, the reason you don't want to do drugs because it screws up your brain really badly, then regardless of your belief in these invisible magic, magic beings, it's still going to mess up your brain. Yeah. Uh, uh, who are we talking to? This is David. Arth, Arth, David. David. Um, yeah, I think you could stand to be a little bit more skeptical about these claims. Well, yeah. I mean, I can, I can be. I mean, I can be skeptical, but I'm just saying it's it's a factor in in the sense that if people, if some, you can usually not judge a person by you know what they do uh, in their religion, but you can tell if they're on sturdy ground with the religion or not, and that's 
some people say no, some people say yes, but you can unless if they come back to it in a in a life threatening situation, use it to get themselves out of a situation. Now I'm atheist, I don't believe in that. Again, but I believe it'd be a good tool and I and I, while I, I can and, and, oh, I, boy, I can understand tool, that to a, a certain extent. But again, uh, I, I see I, I I think that's ethically reprehensible. Yeah. The idea of going ahead and using religion as a tool to uh, to screw with people's minds, to, well, okay, to help their minds, right? right to right. use religion consciously, knowing it's a load of nonsense, because of the effects it has. I, I just, I don't believe in lying to people for their own good. Right, right. I don't well, believe you, in that. I well, think you're, that's you're, ethically you're saying bad. If it's somebody like us teaching them, and, and it's not something like it's nobody like us, it's it's somebody that believes in it as well. Well, I, and I and I think that you know running programs like that and uh, cooking the statistics so that you can get government funds, um, like the Bush administration loves to do, and not just with with you know prison prayer programs, right? Mm -hmm. The Bush administration is famous for. Uh, cooking uh, statistics to make it look like the thing they wanted to do all along was a good idea. I, I, I really think that that's ethically reprehensible. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, there's there's always going to be some cases, uh, especially with uh, the vast these... majority of cases. Well, look I wouldn't say a vast majority because well, I would look closer that that draw government funding, but on a lo on a local level, like county prisons that yeah. show, you know. You're looking at like federal and certain cases where some Let's, things have been cooked. Even if you look, you look at some at the, of the local you know, the Christians themselves, the I can. I, I've got yeah. the statistics from the Barna Research Group. This is a Christian uh, fundamentalist research organization, right? Right. They're great because what they're you what they do is they come up with these scary statistics that are scary to Christians, right? And they're they're used by uh, by preachers to scare their flock into. You know, being more uh, fanatical, uh, given more money, and and so on. Uh, one of them is this: these statistics that show that uh, that believers are no more moral than non-believers. Right? These are Christ right. Christian compiled statistics. Now they'll go around act acting like it, you know you. One of the ne reasons you need religion. In fact, they'll tell you this to your to your face. One of the reasons you need religion is because you need that threat of eternal punishment to keep people in line. Well, it's not true. It's just not true. Their own statistics show it's just not true. Yeah. And even going back to specifically what you were talking about, I don't about, think you're nearly based based programs. About not nearly. Is they had one in Texas, which I can't remember the name of right now. Um, but this was famous years and years back to where essentially they were abusing kids really badly. Um, yeah. And it was a call. We've actually had one of the people who went to that, to that, to this camp, whatever it was, um, call into the show a couple times. Um, it was yes. some lady. And, and she had gone through that and had basically just some horrible experiences at one of these faith based Christian. You know, ministries that's meant and, for kids in bad situations. And, right. and, and it would be wrong to uh, try to uh, manipulate people by getting them to believe stuff like this. Yeah, even if the effect was good, it would be wrong. Right, right. Mind control. I mean, I'm, if you look at, I mean, humans in general, like, if, if you were, there's, there's two types. I mean, you can tell a drug user that it's bad for your brain. It'll destroy your brain. Yeah. Uh, it'll destroy, you know, whatever you, whatever drug it is that you're taking, the effects of it. And you can tell them that all you want, but it's never going to hit home with them. Uh, and so we should lie that. to them? Yeah, I'd rather find a way to make that argument hit home or find other arguments that will work than to start lying. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Well, you say it's lying because it would be, you're saying that essentially that would be you teaching them, but I'm saying if somebody else on the well, same Well, you're, 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 you're an atheist. Don't you think it's lying? Oh yeah. Well, well I mean, there you go. I believe, I believe, uh, that's it. I believe whatever can help them get through the the time, that personal struggle is is okay as long Ly as so lying to people for their own good is okay is what you're saying. What's that? Lying to people for their own good is okay is what you're saying. It wouldn't be me doing it though. I wouldn't but, be lying. See, uh, I wouldn't no, be lying because okay. I, okay. I dude, lying. you know that other people are lying to them. Do you think that's okay or not? What's that? Do you think it's okay for other people to lie to them? No. Okay. I don't, I don't either. Believe, I don't, I don't I either, and that's why those no freaking programs should be shut down. What's that? I, I don't think so either, and that's yeah. why those programs should be shut down. 
you sh- you wouldn't believe in that their leaders should be shut down? I didn't understand. I didn't hear you. These, I don't these think people, it's okay for other people, even if they believe it. I don't think it's okay for people to teach other people something that is ultimately a lie just to manipulate that person psychologically. I whether, don't think that's good. Whether they I believe it or not. Know, just because they believe it doesn't make it any better. Oh, well, I mean, for I mean, if you were to accuse somebody of lying, you could... But, see, you, you accuse them of lying, but they actually believe it. Uh, so? <laughs> it's still, so that means they'll have trouble understanding me, but it doesn't change my position. It's still something that... We consider well, false. Relative. I mean, no, it's not relative. Extent. No, no. Li- lies, extent, lies. I mean, okay, lies no relative to whatever is about. actually true. Is there really a god? What's that? Is there really a god? No. No. Well, then, if you teach somebody there's really a god in hopes of mani- of manipulating them psychologically, you're lying to them. Even if you believe it, it's still not true. Right. Okay. But if 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 like you were to you were to say that right to another person that you would knowingly willingly be lying lying you have to be knowingly lying to them and they are they are knowingly well, telling them what they think is the truth uh <laughs> him i guess we i guess there is room there for uh for a semantic argument right right um, the, yeah it's all semantic the point is that, i don't case. all right let me let me use a less pejorative term okay i won't say lying i'll say telling people things that aren't true Misleading. I don't think it's okay to tell people things that aren't true in order to manipulate them. I don't think that's right. Even if you believe the thing is true, you're still telling somebody that it, uh, a thing that isn't true in order to manipulate them. It doesn't make it any better. It doesn't right. make I, them. I, I doesn't make. Agree with that. Doesn't doesn't help them ethically at all. Doesn't. It's their responsibility. It's the responsibility of anybody that tells anybody anything to actually know what the heck they're talking about. Yeah. And okay. if they and well, if they then, say then something that's not true, I that's guess we their have to fault. Find some way. Huh? In that situation, I guess we have to find some way to make people realize what they, you know, if they're not, well, yeah. they're destroying themselves. That's it's, why we have a. It's not an easy TV thing, show. but like I said, we're going to go ahead and let you go here. We've got a couple okay. minutes left. Go ahead and take some other callers. But thanks a lot for calling. Thanks, man. Yeah, thanks, thanks for letting that call go on so long. I I know a number of <laughs> atheists who are of the opinion, and this is historically this has been common. Uh, atheists of the opinion that. Well, yeah, for a certain segment of the population, it's really yeah. a good thing that there's a religion. I don't buy it. I, I don't buy it, even for that segment of the population. Yeah. I just I can't wrap my head around the idea that it is somehow worth it uh, for some people to believe nonsense to get, get some other kind of gain. Yeah. I, I think everybody has a right to accuracy. And the truth. Well, as close to the truth as we can get. <laughs> Okay. All right. Uh, we're going to go on to one more caller, most likely. Uh, we have Arthur. How you doing? Arthur, you're still Arthur, you there? Hello? Yes, you're there. Can you hear us? Okay. I am not Arthur. I have somehow cut into y'all's line. Who are you? Okay. Sam. What's your name? Sam. Sam. Okay. Sorry about that. What you got for us? Okay, well, um, I was just going to call and uh, identify Victor Frankl. He is the guy that... Uh, kind of invented lots of the types of thought as far as uh, um, not necessarily religion, but... Um, okay. What was the name again? Victor... Victor Frankl. He was... Uh, he how do you spell that? F-R... I, oh, I don't know how to spell it. He was a Jewish guy in the concentration camps. Okay. And um, he had lots of ideas about the drive of mankind and... Uh, people's willpower and how to harness that okay. and and the the thing that put people through the concentration camps was basically their will to survive he thought okay and uh well we'll go ahead and look that up and see what we can see victor frongel <coughs> is that yeah frongel and he invented okay. logo therapy okay. i don't have a lot to say about it but y'all should check it out because okay. lots of people i heard some people earlier talking about how they thought that religion was something that would push someone through a war situation or a stressful time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Victor Frankl thought of lots of ideas on that that had to do with okay. um, like family power or yeah. actually having coping mechanisms, substance. basically. Yeah, you know, okay. and not right. necessarily a coping mechanism, but like something to believe in or something okay. to fight for. And he would notice that, uh, you know, uh, a flu or something like that would come through the concentration camps and theoretically a flu would be something that would kill random people or something like that. But yeah. what he would notice was 
it would only kill the people the people who didn't have families the people who uh weren't yeah. willing to fight to survive the people with you know yeah. uh less to live for they would succumb to death quicker and it wouldn't be a random thing like you would think yeah. a flu would would yeah. be killing people yeah. it was this specific your psychological your die. psychology has a factor in yeah in your immune system for instance so yeah and okay. and you know right. i think in some ways uh i am an atheist but in some ways i kind of think that the world around us is god you know and uh it's not well, necessarily a god you know i don't think it's like a guy up on a ivory pedestal that sounds you know, like you're a deist like the clouds. there's a word right there's a word for that that's deist a deist yeah look that up all right, Jefferson well, um, was a deist. Yeah, y'all should check out Victor Frankl. He has very interesting studies, and uh, his studies have branched off into a whole branch of therapy and things like that. Okay. So y'all might like that type of stuff. All right. Okay, take a look at that. Thanks for yep. calling. Take it easy. Bye. Yeah, time for one more? I think we most likely do. Um, let's go. Okay. Eek, you there? Oh, yeah, this is Zeke. Oh, Zeke. Zeke, I'm sorry. <laughs> Zeke, no, that's all right. <laughs> all right, what's going on? I, I, I was listening to your show, now. I'm, I'm a deacon at a Lutheran church, so you guys uh -huh. don't don't get on me yet. <laughs> well, we've only got a couple minutes left, so... How dare okay. you! <laughs> Real quick. See, I'm sort of wondering if, uh, sort of wondering what y'all's upbringings was, that you don't, um, that you don't have God in your heart. I don't know if, we, we, was y'all raised Christian? Yeah. I was actually raised Catholic. I went to church every uh, every week through about 11th grade or so. Um, before I decided, uh, I've always been skeptical or questioned it, didn't really see any reason to believe. And at 11th grade, grade, I finally said, what, nope, sorry, what, it's a lot of what, wishful what, thinking. What, what, is, what does upbringing have to do with it anyway? Doesn't it, is you, isn't uh, the real uh, question whether he exists or not? Now, is, is you Billy D? Huh, oh, what? I, I'm, I'm trying to get your name straight. Jeff D. Susie and Billy D. And I'm wondering if you got right. the, well, is that the elephant man? Okay, um... Anyway, I think we have got, uh, we can go on to Brent. How you doing? Uh, pretty good. How about yourself? What you got for us? Well, I just have a question about uh, something you said a couple callers ago about the prison ministry and somebody getting out of prison, how it would be a better idea to tell them uh, that drugs screw up their brain and that would be a better incentive to not go back to prison. Okay. And I'm just wondering what part of the uh, atheist belief system would tell you that it's worse to screw up your brain than not to screw up your brain. Um, hmm. Uh, well, uh, there's no evidence Depends on the that results uh, of the screwing, when we I say guess. screw up, we mean you know change it relative to the way it normally functions. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not and, talking and usually in a worse way. This way, I'm talking about a yeah. matter of right and wrong. Yeah. I'm just asking how can you determine oh, right for, from wrong uh, if, it, if it has detrimental effects? Now, well, why does detrimental effects constitute wrong in your belief system? Oh, because, because they hurt either the person or those around them. And, and that is wrong. Why? Because I don't want to be hurt. Because you don't want to be hurt. So it, it comes down to relativity then. Yeah. What if I do yes, want to be hurt? Yes, in fact, in fact it does. Any, any moral or ethical system, its purpose, right, setting aside what the actual rules are, the whole point of having such a thing is to help people get along with each other. So let me That's just the ask point. this question in response to that. Do you believe in an objective right and an objective wrong? Um, not, not probably inside. not the way that you do. Well, it, if I assume you're coming from a from a theistic angle, I do not believe that there is some list of 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 taboos somewhere that if you can do these things and not do those things, like yeah, but, hard but line you would agree, rules you would agree like with that. Me that that let's say Adolf Hitler killing six million Jews was wrong, right? Uh, and that what was his. What was his reasoning? Oh, I don't know his reasoning, but uh, well, I don't see, to me, know. to me, to me, it matters. Six million people. Do you think that's wrong? I, I can imagine. Oh, cut! We can't do this in the last forty-five seconds of the seconds well, of the show. Yeah. Um, what it matters whether there was a real justifiable reason to do it, and in Hitler's case, there wasn't. And Hitler's, you, Hitler's you problem with the Jews was, from was an unjustifiable reason. What? I mean, your circular reasoning here. How do you determine a, a, a justifiable reason from an unjustifiable reason? Relativity? Relativity? Maybe we'll you get mean, to that you in mean, a different you show. Okay, you don't mean okay. physics, do yeah. you? What? What no, do you mean I'm by relativity? About, okay. I'm talking about... We're, we're, we got ten we seconds left. Sorry, thanks for your call. We'll have to get to that another show, <laughs> maybe.
Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Thank you very much, Jeff, for coming on and Thank helping you. out here. Everybody, see have ya. a great weekend, and we'll see you next week.